uh, in my grammar, my English. But anyway, are you ready to hear the man of God? Yeah, I miss him so much. Would you help me welcome Pastor Alan Chris? <laughs> morning. It's so good to see all of you here today. I uh, like what Pastor Bobby has mentioned. Last time I was here was uh, in February. I mean, three weeks. So I've been lying dormant for sick wise for four months. So may the grace of God be with us today. <laughs> Amen. It is a, a, a good time for all of us right now because the Lord is for the past few weeks, the Lord has been speaking to us about the seasons that he is bringing us into. Amen? Uh, the past few weeks, he has been, uh, we have been talking about going up to a new level when it comes to giving, when it comes to generosity. And I pray and I hope that all of us have caught that message and we're already running with it right now. Amen? I pray and I hope that we are already running and and, and walking with that message right now because we cannot go to the next one until until those things that we hear we need to put into practice. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And last week I believe uh, Pastor Bobby shared something about going up to the other, the next level when, when, when it comes to before it was financial but now it's the presence of God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So I just want to build on that. I just want to put fire on, on that message this morning. Going up in the next level, in, in our pursuit of the presence of God in our lives. Amen? Did you know that I, I don't know where you are right now. You may be a student. You may be a, um, maybe your first time to be here this morning. And, and the word presence, the word anointing might be a, a, a new word for you. Okay? But this morning I just want to tell you that um, because of the times that we're living in right now, it's a time of technology. It's a time of um, a lot of modern things. It's a time of, you know, you would see pictures on, on, on the internet. And you wouldn't believe if they're true or not because it's a time of digital uh, enhancing and imaging that they can put a fake stuff in, into something that, that they can make something that is non-existent look real. Amen? In this time of uh, technology, we have all this... are supposed to be helping us and making life easy, amen? Uh, we, we are so, our senses, our, our natural senses are so stimulated, amen? We can't go uh, maybe 10 minutes, 30 minutes without doing this to our phone. We, we can't go uh, 10 minutes, maybe an hour without texting anybody or receiving anything, uh, something. You know, because our senses are stimulated, that's too much of that. It makes us a little bit, uh, not numb, but it makes us overlook the reality of the presence of God in our lives. Amen? I want you to know that the presence of God this morning is as real. He wants that presence in your life, in my life, to be as real as the phone that you are holding right now. Yep. Amen? He wants that presence in your life to overwhelm you and me. More than the things that are overwhelming you in the natural right now. And you know what? You may be going through life right now. There are a lot of things that are trying to overwhelm your heart. Yep. You know, you may have been getting uh, this kind of diagnosis. You may be facing this kind of situation. There's a great need in your life. There, there's a situation. There's a crisis in your relationship. There's a, a big event that you need to brace up yourself and face and go into. Those are real. I have those. Do you have those? Okay. I'm glad that you have those. I'm glad that we're real people here. Okay? But this is the thing. As real as those things are, the presence of God can be something that is more real than those things. The presence of God in your life and mine can be something that will overwhelm our hearts more than these issues overwhelm us. And when we get to that next level, that is our next level, when we allow that presence of God 
the reality of God being present in my life. The reality of God being present in your life. When we get to that point where it's so real, the things that are around us will not overwhelm us anymore. Yes, when we wake up in the morning, they will still be there. When we, when we go out of these four walls, they will still be there. But let me tell you, because the Lord, your God, has been so real to you, the presence of God has been so real to you, you are walking with your head up. Amen. You are walking with a sense of victory. You are walking with a sense of, of uh, 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 accomplishment in your heart. You don't walk in fear. You don't walk in insecurity because there is that sense of the presence of God overwhelming your heart. Amen? David knew about this. But before that, you know, let me, let, let me share this to you. Refuse to be content with just the knowledge of God, but insist of experiencing His presence. How many of you know you know, we, I, I was um, hearing somebody being invited to church uh, this week, and he said, you know what? I'm not really a church guy. So he doesn't go to church because he's not a church guy. But really, going to church is not about you being a church guy or not a church guy. Amen? If for some people, they go to the church because they want to know more about God. They walk their, their Christian life, their Christian faith with, with the desire to just know more about God, and there's nothing wrong with that. I am for that. I want to know God in my life. I want to know what His Bible says. I want to know the right doctrine. I want to know the right beliefs. Amen. I want to know, know the right word, the right stuff. But on top of all that, everything that is right, I want to experience Him. Because it's in experiencing Him, that's when the change in my life comes. In experiencing Him, in, in Him being so real that, that I experience His grace, I experience His mercy, I drink from it every day. When I drink from it, when, when something overwhelms me and I run to this presence and I drink from it, that's when I get changed. Amen? It's the reality of God being ushered in my life that changes me. And, and David knew about that. You know David? Not David Garza. King David. King David from the Bible, okay? It says here, let's read this. In Psalm 63, he said, O God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul, meaning my soul, my will, my emotions, my thoughts, they thirst for you. And my flesh, they long for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you. I have sought after you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Remember those words. There must be something about the presence of God that David would thirst after him. You know, David, he's a king. He has his kingdom. He has his army. He has his wealth. Yet, he still longs for the Lord his God because he knows that everything that he has in his kingdom will not satisfy him, but it's just God, the person of God, will satisfy him. Thus, he made it his goal to get, to, to, to pursue that presence of God in his life. Psalm 83, he said again, How lovely is your dwelling place. How lovely is your presence. How lovely is that presence, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns. It even faints for the courts of the Lord, for the presence of God. And my heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Amen. David has found something. And you know what? We need to at least put ourselves in a position where David was. When all, everything around us, we seem right now is satisfying us, they make us not pursue God with the intensity that He wants us to pursue Him. When everything is done by natural means and by reason, when everything has to be done with, with, with the conventional methods, like for example, you have a problem, you do this. You, 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 you have a, 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 somebody wronged you, you do wrong to that person. You're sick, you just start arranging for your insurance. No. Amen. There must be something about God. That, you know what? God before, in the beginning, he used to live in a box. He lived in that ark. His presence was contained in that ark. But now, he chose to dwell inside of us. He is attracted to you. 
He is attracted to you. I want to say this before, but I changed my mind about it. I want to title this as attracting the presence of God. But no, he's already attracted to you. There is no way of you doing anything just to attract his presence. He is crazy about you. He loves you. You cannot do anything for him to just uh, love you more and get attracted to you. Let, let, let's put that on the table right now. He is attracted to you. You know, he chose, he, he chose me. He chose you to become his, his, his best, his dwelling place right now. The Bible says he doesn't live in, 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 in buildings built by hands, but he, he lives inside of you and me. We are the temple. We are the temple. Of, he, he's now living inside of you. And, and there's, there's a reason why he chose us to be his dwelling place. Amen. I always have this uh, picture in my mind when I was preparing for this. Have you, have you heard of that word, ultraviolet light? Ultraviolet light. When I was in the Philippines, I would work. And whenever we discharge a patient, they would bring in an ultraviolet light machine inside the room. And the purpose of that is to, to emit that ultraviolet light that would destroy any bacteria, any virus that has been left there. Amen? And I want to say to you this morning that the presence of God is like that light that is brought inside of all of us, inside of me, inside of you, that uh, whenever, the longer we allow it, to shine, the longer we expose our hearts to it, the more of the natural things is being destroyed. The, no, the more of those things that need to be dealt with, the issues of our hearts, the issues and the wounding of our soul, those, those wounds, those scars in our mind, the more we expose, the more we get exposed to that presence of God, the more, you know, it, it, it turns things around in my life. David saw something very important in that presence. He knew that the presence of God to him is life. He knew that the presence of God to him is, is healing. He knew that the presence of God to him is, is something that will satisfy him. He loved the presence of God. Like we were singing a while ago, he was a lover of the presence. He loved nothing else. And because he loved that presence, psalms were, were written. Songs were written out of his love for that presence. And we are here right now in this modern age, year 2013. And the challenge for us right now is to have the same love for that presence in spite of the modern things that are surrounding us. In spite of the accessibility of, you know, convenient things. We will still choose to run to God. To run for his presence because we are dependent on him. Amen. There was something in that presence that David saw. And I pray that at this season of our lives, we will see that that presence is so precious. That presence is life. You know? Uh, in, in, in we were talking about cancer a while ago. One of the things that uh, they use in cancer treatment right now is if you have this mass, if you have this cancer, let's say, for example, here, okay, here, it's easier because you just, instead of pointing anywhere, here, okay. If you have a cancer here, they, they have those electrodes that they put in, the, in that cancer tissue and they emit radiation, okay. And what it does is they destroy those cancer cells. And how many of you know that before we met Christ, before we were sinners, there was a lot of things that the enemy has done in our lives. There was a lot of things that he has released and, and wreaked havoc in our, in our thoughts, in our emotions, in our will. That we cannot see things the way God sees them. We cannot judge things the way God sees them. Okay? It's because of what we, has happened in the past. There's a lot of things. Our, our minds were reprogrammed to be antagonistic against the ways of God instead of submissive to the ways of God. But Jesus came and gave us a chance to know about his mercy, of his salvation, so that whenever we received him, we received him, we received his presence. And let me tell you right now, that presence of God is in your life. 
that presence, you have a measure of presence in your life. Amen. If you have been born again, if you receive Jesus Christ in your life, you have that presence. You don't have to la 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 or jump and, and to, to attract. You have that presence because you are that temple. He is living inside of you now. And let me tell you something about this presence. This presence is a person. It's not a cloud. He manifests himself as a cloud sometimes. He makes himself known. He, he shows himself with a cloud, with fire. But let me tell you the very bottom line of this presence. He is a person. He is the person of the Holy Spirit that you received on the day that you got saved. Amen? Whenever we talk about the power of his presence, whenever we talk about the glory of his presence, whenever we talk about, you hear people about talking, talking about the presence of God manifesting. Sometimes they would see clouds. Sometimes they would see fire. Sometimes they would feel goosebumps. Sometimes they would feel the joy. Sometimes they feel refreshed by that presence because of one person, the person of the Holy Spirit living inside of you. You are carriers of this person. You are carriers of this presence. Amen? That whenever you go out there, whenever you face the things that you, you, you left behind those doors earlier, and when you go out, they're still there. Let me remind you that you have somebody in you. You have a presence inside of you that is greater than those things behind those doors. Will you remember that this week? That whenever you face something, draw strength and be aware that there is that presence inside of you that makes you an overcomer. Amen? The presence of God. You know, God, it, 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 He's also called the anointing. He's also called the glory. I personally, I have a lot of people around me right now. I have my wife. I have my kids. I have my, my, my pastors, I have, I, have, I have my subgroup, okay? And I draw strength from them. I draw encouragement from them. My wife encourages me. My kids, I love them. They bring joy to my life. I have a job, and uh, I love my job. I do. I love my job, okay? What am I saying? So what? <laughs> the thing here is this. My point is this. At the, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, having all these things, having all these people around you, there is only one person. There is only one place where you can really draw strength from. There is one place. There is one person where they will not be shocked at all by anything that you say or anything they find out about you. There is only one person. 